Right, so, where are we at at the moment? So, good morning, driver. Today you'll be completing a full run from Sunderland St Pancras to Faversham. Calling at each station. Before departing, you'll need to pick up passengers here at St Pancras, so we can do that. Right, now, train's not going to work at the moment, and I can tell you for why, because their MCB VCB um, fail, fault light is on, uh, and we've got no line vaults. Um, now, we are on an overhead section, because we're in St Pancras, so we need to be down here. Let me just, that's it. So we're on CTRL, so we need to pan up shoes down. So I'm going to just zoom back out so that you can see these lights up here. The key one we want is that one on and that one off. So we press pan up shoes down. The line vault light comes on, but the fault light is still on. And you press it again, and the line fault light goes off. We're now ready to go. Um, so if we put it in forwards. Passengers are boarded, proceed to Stratford. Let's answer that, and then let's get moving. Let's put the headlights on. And off we go. So that's the, the first thing to check, is to make sure that the if you're not getting any power, check the line vault and the MCB uh, VCB fault light, and make sure that line vaults are on and MCB VCB are, is off. And you do that by usually by making sure you've ticked both of them. Uh, sorry, you need to press the power button or the uh, um, the light twice. <coughs> the light. You need to press the pan up button. Oh, no camera. <laughs> Hello, I'm flying. Uh, I've actually got a 395. Here we go. We've got a 395. I think, was that Fringe Stalin that sent that one? I can't remember. Whoever it was, thank you very much. Right. So we're going to drive for a little while now and get to Ebbsfleet, and then we're going to repeat some of that the, the same basic steps again. Um, and once you figure that, once you actually get the hang of the changeover, it's it's trivial. It really is. Old man wants AP to do a sound pack for the 395. We already did ours from a 395. What do you want it to sound like? <laughs> Duck, alright, thanks very much. Right, we've switched over to TVM 430. <coughs> Got the 225, so we can keep going. So the, by default, the uh, javelin's also got um, the driver, um, the driver safety device switched on. Um, so if you hear the ringing, then you need to press the uh, the Q key or the Enter key on the numpad to cancel it. That's a good one, Coplopper. So when we let's see, so that was the DSD. That high pitch shrieking is the DSD. Now the 225 has started blinking, telling us we're going to get dropped to the next um, speed. We're going to get told what that is in a minute when we go past here. It's normally 200. So when we get past the next blue flag, which is wherever these are, we'll get told 200. Right. That tells us that we need to be below 200 before we get to this part here. 
the fact that it's flashing tells us when we get here it's going to go down again and then we'll have to decelerate by this signal. So now it's at 170, so we've got until the next signal to slow down. Now it's telling us 170 again, so we can... Uh, Coproper says that to let the DSD catch it next time, that's a good idea, and then we can work out how to recover it once it does go bad. So 160 is the next one, again by the next signal. Now that's probably going to be 100 it normally is I think so I'm going to actually slow down a bit faster than that yep we're down to 100 with a note that we're going to slow down again that normally means we're going to get an 80 when we go past here what it means we must be doing 100 by the time we get to here Otherwise, the brakes will come on. So, take the brakes off. Hey there, Markley 989. I'm doing very good, thank you. So, now we're going to get, uh, I think, an 80. There you go. So, we slow down again. Now, we're actually stopping in Stratford. So at this point I'm just going to let the speed come down some more. This normally gives us a 60 at the end of the platform. Oh, you know, it's an 80. But now we're solid on 80. Right. So let's stop. Well, whether we do another scenario is up to you folks after this. Let's see what happens after this, shall we? Right, we've stopped, so we'll open the doors. Now, the next time the DSD goes off, which will hopefully be, we'll do it in the, in, we'll be in the tunnel the next time, in Tunnel 2, um, then I'll show you what to do with recovering it out of, um, uh, from the emergency situation. Captain Bob, this is London to Faversham. So we start, it's London St Pancras to Faversham via Ebbsfleet. So it goes on HS1, high speed 1, which is uh, one of the fastest, um, it is the fastest line currently in the UK. Right, so we're ready to go. So we're still at 80 uh, speed because the TVM, we're still under TVM control and we've got 80. Joe the Fish says if you hold the enter key you can hear the DSD alarm. There you go. So that simulates. So what happens in reality is that the driver is holding his foot down on a pedal. So rather than where you would just have to tap a button, he actually has to um, uh, release his foot off the button. Pressing and holding it is like simulating releasing, you're taking your foot off the pedal and train saying, whoa, whoa put your foot back on. Ah, uh, shift space for the other horn. There we go. Thank you, Fringe. Right, we've just been given uh, clearance up to 225. So at this point, I'm going to accelerate and I'm going to take my hands off the controls. And we are going to... Um, just let the DSD come in. So we should get the alarm in a moment and I'm going to ignore the alarm. So that brief, brief blip there implies that we're actually following something and uh, we just got um, speeded back up again. So we might get dropped down again at this signal, which might be a problem for our experiment. Now there's the DSD shrieking away. Right. 
now we're slowing down, the brakes have come on, the emergency brake is on. So let's uh, let's wait until it stops and then we'll we'll reset it. So the reason this has happened is because the driver safety device alarm went off, um, which it does every 60 seconds or so if we don't touch the controls, and um, you get if you do that, then the, the, basically the train thinks you're not paying attention or you're incapacitated or sick or unconscious and so it just slams all the brakes on and stops the train. It's just a standard, it's a very basic safety device. Copropa says you can, sorry, Moleman says you can reset it whilst moving. Um, and I ju but I just wanted to stop the train so that we could focus on it. So if you press Q or enter, that will stop the shrieking. Now what you need, so you know the, this alarm says we're in emergency, you can see it over here and if we look, let me just pull so I can look down if you see, if I turn the cab light on you'll see this alarm here, if you pull it down pull it up, sorry and then push it and that's it you're just pushing it all the way into so you see you've got a max setting and you've got an E setting if I spring it up, which you can see more clearly on the HUD if I spring it it puts it into emergency. If I spring it back, it takes it out. Yeah, so now I can. Didn't mean to change it from neut into neutral, that was just. Now we're ready to go again. So let's do it again. If we get the opportunity, we'll do it again, and this time we'll actually s we'll get it going again while we're, um, while we're moving. So the key thing is if the alarm goes off, you need to press the enter key or Q key to reset it and you then need to bounce the throttle handle you do both of those things and then you're able to drive again right so we're carrying on we've got 14 miles till we get to Ebbsfleet where we do another power change so I'm gonna let this one start failing the line again uh, failing the light, that doesn't even make sense. When we get the next DSD alarm, I'm going to ignore it again. And we're going to get the train moving, or keep the train moving. Right, so the alarm's gone off. Right, we're now in emergency brakes. So I press the Q key, bounce the throttle, and then put the throttle back on again. And that's it. We're now accelerating again. So you don't have to stop the train. So remember, it's the Q or Enter key to, agno to acknowledge the CIFR alarm, which stops the high-speed shriek, and then it's bounce the throttle or throw it into the brake uh, at the bottom to um, to release it from emergency brake. The 360 on Great Eastern Mainline has the same feature. Um, so if you find that you're in the same situation in 360, it's exactly the same solution. Just bounce this throttle handle down into the bottom. Right, <clears throat> this time we'll, we'll actually answer it. Captain Bob says, so it's looking to see if the engineer is still controlling the throttle. It is basically, the whole purpose of DSD is to make sure that the train is, um, uh, is still being driven. Right, so if I press Q, then what that is, is there's a foot pedal down here. Um, down here. Uh, I don't know if I can get, I can go camera so I can see it, but there's a foot pedal down here and the driver has to hold his foot uh, pressing down the button all the time. And when the alarm goes off, he releases it and presses it back down again. And that's what you're simulating by pressing the Q key. Hey Ian Zoo, yes the raffle was done earlier on I'm afraid. There's your cab light. Right, so we're being slowed down. Again, there's a warning we're being slowed down. Press the Q key. When we go past this next signal, we'll get told what to slow down to. 
200, so we throttle down and we put the brakes on. Remember this is your brake gauge, so you can use that to determine how the brakes are on. We must be down to 200 by the time we pass this uh, block marker. Being slowed down to 170. keep the brakes on a little bit. Since we're being told we're going to be slowing down, I'm just going to slow down some more. Now it's 100, so again we've got to get down to 100 by the time we get to there. Now another indication you might see is on one of these displays you see three zeros, it's like a red indicator, three zeros with red backgrounds. And what that means is it's called the Trois Rouge uh, because TVM is a French system. And Trois Rouge means stop, it's a red light. There we go, that is a stop signal. Yeah, um, and that means that this, this, basically this block marker I cannot proceed past. At some point, when the um, yeah, twelve rouge means three reds. So at some point, hopefully, then we're going to uh, we're going to get put uh, a better speed limit. So we're coming up on the um, the flag at the moment. The nom nom train, as Fringe Starling calls it. You know, I don't think I ever remember having a red light here. Something strange going on. No, I've never had a red here before. As good as it was to uh, say there'll be a red light coming up and there, oh, there, ooh, this is what to do with the red light and one actually came up, that was pretty cool, but not much use to us here. There's nothing in my way. scenario is broke. Well, that's a pain. I'm just going to pass this signal at danger then. Right, having passed the signal at danger, we've got a signalman's call on indicator here. So the yellow and blue flag is actually the way that the signals are uh, sections are blocked. So we've now gone into the uh, three red squares because we're inside a, uh, a specially permitted section. Oh, I went too fast. 
Again, just put it back into uh, bounce the brakes off the bottom and then you can keep it going. What it probably means is we're going to be going a bit slow until we get to the next block. Which I think we're limited to 30 kilometers an hour. Uh, Woody says, is this method of driving only on this train and route? Yes. Uh, Captain Bob, the red, three red squares basically means we're in a uh, a section where we've been given special permission. So in German routes it's like Befell 40, the override. So we've been allowed inside a red section, though, so a, uh, a blocked section. And um, the three red squares remind me that I'm on my own visual recognizance. Um, so I must stop if I see something in front of me. That's why there's a low speed limit as well. So we're coming up on another block section, so hopefully when we pass that we'll get a more uh, favourable speed indicator. Cough I've got no idea. I mean, in theory it is. I don't know why they start with the pantographs down. Um, I suspect it's because they're defaulting to driving on the third rail all the time. Um, but, yeah, in theory that's fixable. I mean, we kind of got round it on... Um, the Metro North M8. So I imagine the same solution would probably be work, probably work in this instance. So fundamentally, the game doesn't understand the difference between third rail and overhead, <coughs> which is why you end up with the situation. That's it, Captain Bob. It's restricting. Yeah. Hopefully, the going past this signal will actually give us a better indicator. Hey! Alright, let's hurry our way to Epsilon. So, if something went wrong with the signalling there, I don't know what. Ed, I think that that's how it works on the M8. Yeah, I'm now nine minutes late. <laughs> oh dear, never mind. Couple of them out. Um, do the javelins travel further than uh, the Nebs fleet? Yeah, I think they do. Ashford, I think, is where they go down to on the, on the line. Uh, Ed, no, the M8, so the markers were there for the player, but the markers don't work for AI trains, so you can't use a marker to tell an AI train to change from overhead to third rail. Uh, fringe styling. I don't know the answer to that question. I think it probably would. Right, so we're getting slowed down. We're actually heading into Tunnel 3 now. Um, so uh, it's a bit foggy, so you probably can't see it, but the QE2 bridge will be over on our right. In fact, there's the M25 there going across the top. It's the London Orbital. So 200 and warning of going down again. 
So we're, the reason it's doing this is slowing us down so far out because uh, we're going through, uh, at the end of Tunnel 3 we go straight into Ebbsfleet Station. And through just in here we get another, uh, another blue flag. The blue flag is the equivalent of a signal, um, remembering that the signals are all electronic. The blue flag is just there to remind the driver. So we need to be down below 170 by the next signal. Ed, yes, this route came before gradient easing, and in fact it was one of the main re drivers for making sure that gradient easing went in. <laughs> All right, we're right under the Thames now, and we're about to head back up to the surface. So you notice the 100 isn't flashing, and that's because it's not going to slow us down at the next signal. Ride car gradient is smoothing, is where you can make much, much smoother um, changes in gradient. Sorry, this had gradient smoothing, but it had quite low res gradient smoothing, whereas that uh, was changed, I think, in TS15, uh, possibly 14, to be significantly um, higher resolution. Uh, Mole Man, you're not allowed to go 300 kilometers an hour through the uh, Channel Tunnel. I think it's 160 kilometers an hour or 120 kilometers an hour. And it's about a 25 mile tunnel. It's amusing because lots of people are really, really keen on having um, the. on MSTS days, they were really keen on having the Channel Tunnel, and someone actually built Ashford to Lille. Um, Sorry, Ashford to Calais, I think it was. So you got basically the you could you could basically do the uh, the um, the merry go round service, um, and once it actually came out, everyone drove it once and never did it again because they got bored of driving through that big long tunnel. <laughs> right, so we're coming into Ebbsfleet, and then we'll do the power change. So there was two actually cop plopper mouse. So the one that you're talking about through Just Trains was actually um, done by uh, Ken Austin um, of European Barn um, and was largely fictional. So anyway, we're, we are looking at another Trois Rouge and the reason for that is we are coming to the end of LZB. Uh, sorry, not LZB. What am I talking about? We're coming to the end of TVM 430. Uh, we're about to um, get switched off. Uh, as we come in here, the TVM 430 will switch off. And you'll notice the speed limit will change to miles per hour because we're now under conventional uh, signalling control. In fact, there's the, uh, uh, the, the indicator telling us we're about to switch off cab signalling. There it is. And once we switch over to uh, third rail power, then you'll see it's changed to miles per hour. Um, but this, there was another one that was done freeware coplopper, um, the Ashford to Lille, I think it was, um, which was done much more realistically in terms of the track plans and so forth. And it was a very good route, but everyone still got bored driving through that tunnel. So now we've once we've stopped So at the moment we're running on overhead power because we've got CTRL light lit and we need to switch to DC which is the third rail. So we'll let the passengers get on and then we'll do the switch over.
Right, now we have to switch to DC power. Right, so let's do that in the cab rather than with the keyboard. Right, so again we need to look at these lights as we're doing it. And um, these is this control and this control. So the first thing we're going to do is pan down shoes up. Right, so that's going to knock off the power. And you notice the line volts, all you can hear all the fans have gone off and the MCB fault breaker has gone on. Right, we switch to DC and then we do pan up shoes down. And you can see we've got power, but we've still got the circuit breaker. And then we click it again, circuit breaker light goes out and the fans come on. And then we get moving. You'll also notice that the speedometer is now reading in miles per hour. Proper mouse is wrong. Okay, what did I get wrong? <laughs> you press shoes down, press DC, wait for the light, press done. If you press shoes down before you press DC, then it put the pantograph back up. Because it's a pan up shoes down button. I'm confused. Never mind. There's a couple of ways of doing it, apparently. <laughs> okay, so you just press DC, then pan choose. Yep, it works. The key thing is switch to DC and then press the power button twice. Um, and make sure that you've got your line volt button and, uh, and your circuit breakers off. If you've got the line volt and you haven't, and the circuit breakers are both on, then press the power button again. Oops. So that's kind of it. Uh, TVM is now switched off, and it's all down to standard AWS, and uh, it will work. Right. Time is it? One oh nine. I think that's a fair time to call it a night, actually. So let's just pull into Gravesend, and then I think we'll end it there. Hey Bam2135, your suggestion, I think you emailed it in, it got forward, uh, forwarded it over and it's certainly uh, in the list. No, the centipede I think is going to have to wait, I think at, one, at 10 past 1 in the morning it's time to, uh, to call it quits I think. Uh, because I got held up on that red light, Joe. That strange, anomalous red light which held me up and stopped me for a while. Blame the system that absolutely... <laughs> Right, that's it.
we're in Gravesend. So thanks very much for everyone for hanging around and uh, apologies for the late start. Um, I'll be back on Monday, uh, Monday night at the usual time. And uh, yeah, that's what I thought, more man. Who cares about the minus points? <laughs> um, and uh, yes, uh, my brain's just not working now. Oh, tired. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll be back on Monday night at the usual time. And uh, until then, have a great weekend, folks. Um, I shall see you then. Bye-bye.